Dad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. This is Ari in the Air. Thank you for being here. Stoked to be back, making videos, helping you learn how to paraglide better. Today's episode is about kiting. Some things that you're probably screwing up, that I see a lot of people screwing up, that I want to bring some clarity to and some advice. I recorded this video in the field and I'm going to watch it back with you and I'm going to annotate some things. I'm going to just chime in on things that I th think could be a little bit more clear. Okay? And hopefully it helps. Hit that subscribe button. Consider becoming a patron on Patreon. And let's get right into it, folks. Here we go. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Today I'm going to tell you about the most common kiting tips that I've seen. Just a couple specific ones, but they're super important. Okay, here we go. Hey, Subir's lending us his, his glider and harness, which is really nice of him. Okay, so one of the biggest mistakes that people make here is they just don't quite understand how the glider is designed and um, what it's kind of made to do. So if you think about the glider in a DHV test or in a collapse test, the glider is flying and the risers are apart. Usually this is the distance you want between the risers, right? Well, you want to think about that when you're kiting because where you pull on the risers and in what direction you pull on the risers has a huge effect on how the glider is going to respond. That makes perfect sense, right? Like how you pull on the lines has an effect on the glider. Duh. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see students making is they lift up on the risers, on the A's. They want the glider to come up, but they're lifting up. Sometimes they even grab up on the lines and they do this. The problem with that is that the glider is designed for the wing to fly with the lines right from the Malon. And anytime you reach up the line, you're changing the geometry of the line plan. Right? You don't want to do that. So you never want to grab the riser higher than the Malon. Okay? The next thing is, if you're trying to lift the glider, what you're doing is you're spreading the risers out. The glider is designed to fly with the risers right next to each other. So if you want to pull on the A's to make the glider inflate, what you actually want to do is change the length of the lines relative to the risers. So instead of lifting, which separates the risers and adds tension to the A's because it triangulates the line length, it doesn't actually shorten the line relative. So just as your speed bar pulls down towards the carabiners, so should you pull the A's towards the carabiners to inflate. So like I said, you're not reaching up the lines, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. When you pull the A's to inflate, you're just pulling back on the A's. You're shortening the A's. If you want to think about which direction to pull, it's towards the carabiners. You're going to find that as you become a kiting expert yourself, that there are exceptions to these rules. Sometimes like if the leading edge falls over and there's very light wind and only one part of the leading edge is open, I will grab one line above the Malon, I'll kind of tug on it and I'll tease it to try to get the rest of the glider to inflate and the leading edge to fall back. That's just one example. But for the most part, you really want to be changing the length of the line relative to the carabiner, pulling the lines towards the carabiners, pulling the brake lines towards the carabiners, and so on. Okay. We don't really have any wind right this second. That's going to be the same thing for the brakes and for the rears when we're kiting. So 
another thing that we that I see a lot is when people are kiting, they are like kind of pulling up on the A's instead of deflecting the length of the A's. And the same thing goes with the rears. They kind of push down on the rears or they push down on the brakes instead of pulling the rears towards the carabiners, which changes the length of the line. So here we've got a little wind. So the incorrect thing is to grab up here and to try to pull. And the correct thing to do is to grab the A's and pull towards the carabiners to inflate the glider. It's the same thing on the rears here. God, this thing is so easy to kite. It's the same thing on the rears. Same thing on the brakes. Okay, so another thing is, is that I call this a kiting technique. This is a free-handed kiting technique where I can reach down, I can grab the A's, I can grab the rears, I can grab the brakes, I can do any combination of A's in one hand, brakes on brakes in the other, or one brake, or one A and one brake, any combination thereof, that's the kiting technique that you really want to practice. Anything where you have your hands in the brakes, or you have your hands in the brakes and you have the A's and rears, I consider this a launching technique. Why is it important to know a kiting technique? It just helps you play with the glider more, you can kite uphill, you can tease the glider, you can you just have so much more range with it. And if you can learn to do that, you'll probably have more fun, you'll probably kite more, you'll probably be better at it. So when you actually go to do the launching technique, you'll be so much better at the launching technique too. And it's really important to know, I use a launching technique when I launch, but I use a kiting technique when I kite. And the difference is, is that I can simulate the effective flying position of the glider while I'm kiting because instead of having the A's together, when the A's are together like this, like I said, if you imagine how the glider is designed to fly with the risers coming off of the carabiners, when you pull the A's together in the center, you now are constricting the glider. And what it does is it puts more tension on the outside A line than the center A line. That's why a lot of times you'll see that as you pull up a glider like this, it will go into a horseshoe configuration. The wingtips will get air before the center and it will want to do a horseshoe. So, in this kiting configuration, what you can do to avoid a horseshoe is when you're inflating the glider, you keep the A's nice and wide, which keeps tension on the center A lines instead of tensioning only the outside A's. At least we have the lecture part done. We don't really have the demo yet. <laughs> Bear with me here. The wind does come back and I do a demo of this. Okay. So, like I was saying, to pull the brakes, you don't just push on the rears like this. This is pushing on the rears. This is pulling on the rears. It has a drastically different effect, right? So, instead of pushing and putting pressure, triangulating, I'm gonna grab the rears and I'm gonna pull it towards the carabiner. I'm gonna pull it towards the carabiner. So, this idea of pulling the lines towards the carabiners to change the line length, the little pulley that you have on your brake line, make sure that you do that no matter what. If you push out on your brake, it still goes through the pulley and goes up to the brake cascades. That means that it's gonna pull directly down to the pulley. So the glider is kind of like dumbing you down to make sure that you're pulling the lines relative to the risers. horseshoe even if I try to make it horseshoe but to demonstrate what that looks like with the A's Quite enough. 
enough to do a round hello. Okay, so moral of the story, you want to really think about which direction you're pulling the lines, is you want to change the line length, not just add tension and pressure. You want to think about how the glider is designed and how it wants to fly. The trick for the horseshoe here, as I'm kiting, this glider is really boxy and super easy, but as I kite a higher aspect ratio glider, pulling the risers away from one another is going to tension the inside lines more than the outside. When you pull them like this together, you can expect a horseshoe because it's going to tension the outside lines more than the inside. And this is the opposite. This is the inside lines more than the outside. So if the glider is horseshoeing, you'll see acro pilots do this kiting all the time. If they're kiting and the glider starts to horseshoe, they'll grab the A's, they'll pull them down and away from each other. That kills the horseshoe. So we can see a vast difference in how the glider behaves if we just put tension on the rear, this is tension, and this is pulling the, the line length. You can see it almost looks like a beeline stall. Yeah, thanks Subir for lending us the Pi 3 that's so crazy easy to kite. And I hope that helps you. If you have any questions to clarify anything, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any of those. And yeah, like I said, maybe consider donating to support this channel. It's paypal.me slash airy in the air. Really appreciate that. Stay tuned. Got a bunch more stuff coming your guys' way. See you on the next episode.